good morning respected dignitaries faculty members and all my fellow student managers i feel very honored and privileged to introduce mr prajakt rao mr prajakt rao is the co-founder at applify and also the founder at the hub for startups sir is a pass out of saint sebastian goan high school he is also an entrepreneur sir also advises startups and early stage companies on building meaningful business plan and investor pitch desk sir has worked as vice president at indian angel investors sir is also the co-founder of orange cross which is a healthcare service aggregators sir have also worked as asia director with the indus entrepreneurs client service director with capital advertising and also worked with companies like worldwide medicine zen communication sir has a desire to encourage and assist 1 lakh people to become entrepreneurs sir now I invite you to enlighten us with your words of wisdom the podium is all yours thank you first of all if you if you call me sir i will call you uncle okay my name is project and i'd be preferred i'd prefer if you call me call, call me project uh the experience at your institute keeps on getting better it started with a rose and now it's a bouquet i don't know what will be next so thank you for this very very warm warm welcome uh i think you know devesh had some excellent words of advice for all of you i think uh, very very wisely summarized insightful you know talk and he did talk he did touch upon this entire topic of becoming entrepreneurs etc again you know i had a i i saw a few of you who had put your hands up but again i just want to get a show of how many people at some stage of your life want to be an entrepreneur if not starting off right now that's amazing this is about about 60 70% of the people and people who have decided that they will not be an entrepreneur they will continue to be in professional life. can you put your hands up you know the view is so my view is that everybody is an entrepreneur everybody has an entrepreneurial instinct inside you it's just that most of us are so scared to start off because of the fear of failure that we keep on postponing and then you know what happens then once you start taking up a job you say ki thoda yaar job kar leta and stuff like that when you are my age 40 45 you look back and say ki yaar mere paas bhi na ye idea 10 saal pehle tha maine kiya nahi par uska dekh wo abhi na uska wo 10 million dollar funding ho gaya uska ye ho gaya ho gaya ask any 45 year old and when you are having drinks with your friends you will be ruining the opportunities that you missed not for one moment therefore am i suggesting that everybody should be an entrepreneur immediately but my suggestion to you would be keep that inquisitiveness about business alive in your mind so that when an opportunity presents itself and say hey this is something that i might be interested in doing you are better prepared and not giving up that opportunity because you don't know whether you will be able to be successful in business or no and therefore what is required in my view is that whenever even if you're taking up a job it's it's great to take up a job and all of uh, experience and all but even when you take up a job try to understand how the business of that company that you are working for works rather than just focusing on what you are looking at and the reason i am saying this is because the moment you understand how business works you will be able to take a decision about taking your you starting your own business if and when you want want want, want to do that um my personal passion in life is to encourage more people to be entrepreneurs and the reason i do that is because you know some of the some of the reasons that some people had had given you i don't agree with the reason that taking your own decisions is the should be a motivation for starting up uh at every stage you are responding you are you are answering to somebody if if you don't have a direct boss it's certainly a customer that you are you are you know responding to but somebody mentioned about job creation somebody mentioned about you know so, so solving social problems all of these are things that are possible when you when you become an entrepreneur you will of course need a lot more professionals to work in corporate life but at the same time for a country like ours with a 1.2 billion population and growing etc we also need job creators unless many of you 
go out in that marketplace and create the jobs you have the ability you have the you know the, you you have the education and all of that unless you are able to create jobs we will have problems as a, as a you know uh, as a country now of all the people who were and i'll get into my presentation in a bit but just to get a perspective of all the people that are thinking about at some stage becoming an entrepreneur how many people are thinking of do, just, just raise your hands up <coughs> all of all of you who were thinking of becoming an entrepreneur at some stage hey I, i had a lot more hands up earlier right how many of you are thinking of that your business should be keep your hand up for for just bear with me for 30 seconds how many of you want to do your business that is more than 10 crores anybody who is less than 10 crores keep your hand down how many more than 50 crores how many more than 100 crores how many more than 500 crores how many more than say 3000 crores now the point is that you know with we, we started with almost 60 70% of the people talking about becoming entrepreneurs and i see only maybe 6 or 7 but thank you that, that that's okay keep it i just see about 6 or 7 people raising her hand up for 3000 you know 3000 crores why is that so and the reason is not because you are incapable of building a business that is 3000 crore it is not because india does not offer you a market that where you can create a business that is 3000 crores in today's context if you see around some of the startups that have started in the last 4 or 5 years have demonstrated extremely you know it's evident now that it is very possible for people with very limited experience to go out and build extremely valuable companies and large companies so my submission to you is that if you are thinking of doing a business think of how large you can make that business and how whether there is a potential to actually become large i'm not suggesting for one minute also that a small business is not a good business and perfectly all right to say look i want to really have a small 5 crore 10 crore business i want to make more money than i would have gotten a job no problem at all but don't let your limitation of self doubt saying that i don't know whether i will be able to build a 5000 crore company be the factor for deciding that i want to be a 10 crore or 5 crore or 20 crore company if there is an opportunity for you to build a 5000 crore company and if you have the aspiration i believe that today we have an enabling ecosystem that will allow you to become a 5000 crore company does that make sense do you do you think that there is an enabling environment around today yeah there are, there is a, there are a lot of forums available for mentoring there is a lot of early stage finance available early stage in the sense even when you have an idea just an idea and say hey look you know i and i'll come i'll talk to talk, talk about some of these things only even when you have an idea there is money available uh, uh, for you to get there are resources available the cost of doing business has, or cost of starting up a business has gone down 10 15 20 years ago even to get a basic website done used to cost 3 or 4 or 5 today you 5 lakhs in today you can you know just go on to a wordpress and maybe you know start up a website or go any of these forums and start that so the cost of starting off has has got very very low and therefore it is possible for a lot of people uh, to be entrepreneurs when you are thinking of becoming an entrepreneur a lot of times it it has become fashionable now to think of vc money angel funding vc money startup capital and all of that and while that is available and that's my business my business is to be able to provide entrepreneurs access to venture capital funding or angel investor capital but my submission to you is that when you think of doing that business don't think of angel investing as the only source of getting capital that should be our last source of getting capital because that's the most expensive form of capital what most people don't understand is ki ha abhi isme interest nahi hai kuch nahi i just have to give up a few you know percentage of shares in my company i give equity in my company and i get money and there is no risk so therefore this is easier capital no on the contrary when you take money from angel investors have you, has everybody heard these terms angel investors vcs and are you broadly aware of how that works or do you want me to take a little bit of talk on that how many people would want, would want me to to talk a little bit about okay so there are some people so there are different kinds of 
funding that is available one is what is called debt capital debt capital is what banks and other lending institutions will give you they will take you money there is an obligation on your part to give that money back usually therefore to ensure that you are able to give that money back there is some collateral that they will keep either some valuables like gold etc or your fixed deposits or your house and stuff like that that will be collateral in case you are not able to pay that money back they have a right to you know sort of take recover it with, with that and they they charge you certain interest maybe 10% 15% 20% depending on what kind of sources you 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 get it from now that's one kind of capital and then there is another kind of capital that is available which is called risk capital risk cap capital is what angel investors and vcs put into your business now the way that model works is that they put money in in a concept or a business that you are doing and they take a certain part of the share capital or the equity or shares of the equity of the company so but assume that two friends start a company and you have 50% equity each somebody will come and say okay here's 2 crore rupees i will give you 2 crores you go and do that business but i will take 20% of that company so now the two founders own 40% each and 20% is with the with the person how does a an angel investor or a vc make money as the value of the shares increase much like you buy shares in the stock market and you sell when you when your when, when the price increases they make money when the value of your 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 shares increase now you don't have to pay any interest there is no obligation for you to to pay back and therefore the criteria for how they choose whether to give you money or no i will come to that in a in a bit because that's what my presentation will cover but that's the that's the the, the because there is no interest it is assumed that this is very inexpensive capital do you think it's an expensive capital it's in fact the most expensive form of capital why because today if you are a you are assumed that you are an early stage concept you know little pilots done and stuff like that uh, so we are an early stage company are happy to give 20% but when that company becomes bigger and assume that you become a 300 crore company in 4 or 5 years time and your valuation becomes say 1000 crores in the market how much have you given to this person in terms of value 200 crores right because that person now owns 20% of the company now if you can do the math it's a very very expensive form of capital but if you don't have collaterals if you don't have other means of financing your business that is if that is an option that is available but outside of both of these i would urge you especially if you are doing businesses which are cash generating funding that you can get from advances from uh, uh, thank you i'll, I'll manage thanks uh, advances from customers is the best form of capital a customer paying you and saying here's the advance for that is the best form of capital that you will e ever get so while my business is to help businesses and startups get capital from angel investors my advice to you is come to us last after you have exhausted every other option because that's that's the right decision to make and and the good decision for you okay so what i'm going to talk about today uh, is about this whole concept of presenting your plan to investors and what that also assumes therefore is what are the kind of things that investors are looking for when they are looking for uh, 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 when they are thinking of making an investment okay uh, the biggest mistake that we see a lot of people do first time entrepreneurs do is to think that the idea that they have is the one that is getting funded an idea or even if you you build a product if you build a service or a concept etc is a good starting point but that is not the basis on which somebody is going to invest a good product and a good business are two different things they may be related you may need a good product to build a good business but unless you have been able to are you, are you seeing can you, oh yes the slides are here unless you are able to build a strong business around your product it doesn't make any sense for anybody to invest money or even your own to for you to put your own money a good product is a good starting point but it is neither a necessary condition and i'll come to that and certainly not a sufficient condition for success of a business i have a 12 year old daughter my daughter makes better pizza than dominos most of us can but because she makes better pizza than dominos do you think she will be able to make a better pizza chain than dominos just because her pizza is better 
Why? Because while the Domino's business is about the product is the pizza, the business success depends on their ability to execute it well which includes things like logistics, supply chain, facilities management, people management, procurement, raw materials uh, and all the brand, finance management and stuff. All of these kind of things. Do you think that if Domino's Pizza's quality goes down a little lower their business will shut down? No. Or if their pizza improves tomorrow will their business double? No. But if they improve their supply chain, if they improve their 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 ability to get you know good prices uh, for their uh, or, or get real estate at better prices, do you think they will have a slightly better chance of succeeding? So you have to understand a product and a business are two different things. And when you are thinking of doing a business, you have to think in terms of the business around that product. Domino's and Pizza Hut are in the same business, right? Right. Anybody disagrees that Domino's and Pizza Hut are in, in the same business? You disagree? Why? Absolutely right. You know, the product is the same. They are selling the same product. But just because if somebody was the CEO of Domino's, just because he was a CEO of Domino's doesn't mean he or she will become a good CEO of Pizza Hut because the competencies required to run that business are completely different. It's not about logistics experience. It's not about all of these kind of some of these things would be relevant, but it is about customer experience management with a key. Does that experience have a role to play in the Domino's part of the business? No. Now to say that Domino's and Pizza Hut are in exactly the same, but thank you for that answer, excellent answer. Uh, but to say that Domino's or Pizza Hut are in the same business is just to say that Shopper Stop and Flipkart are in the same business. The dynamics of that business are just so different that it is a completely different business even if the product is the same. Am I able to make that point clearly that a product and business are two very different concepts and that you have to think in terms of how you think of a business when you're talking about it, right? Now, when I talk about entrepreneurship, I don't necessarily talk in the context of you going and doing something of your own. You may not start your own business. But this thinking of understanding the, 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 the dynamics of a business will be extremely valuable for you even when you're in a job because a person who has entrepreneurial traits is a person who's a little more inquisitive. He's, he's a little more leadership oriented. Why will that be? Because you are, you are a little more aware of a bigger picture. What Devesh was also talking about, you know, when you see a little, when there is transparency and see a larger picture. So if you have a trans, uh, an entrepreneurial bent of mind, you're likely to be a little more successful in your professional career as well. <coughs> Don't make a business plan for an investor. Most people think that what is a business plan? A business plan is a PowerPoint presentation that I make to present to investors and that is the common perception in the market. A business plan is nothing but your plan for your business. It is your plan for your business. It is a story about how you want to take this concept and how do you want to execute in the market, in the market? how do you implement it, how do you expand, how do you scale. How do you raise capital for that and all of that kind of thing. And each of these uh, stakeholders that you will encounter in your life will have different flavors of this. These are the various things that you will, you will cover as far as your story is concerned. Now to some people you will present it at a, as a 510 slide PowerPoint presentation. To some people you will present it as a Word document. To a finance guy you might talk to him in the context of an Excel sheet. When you are talking to your prospective in-laws as to why they should allow their child to marry you, you will talk to them as a story of saying that look this is what I intend to do and I expect to be successful. When you are trying to hire somebody and convince that person that you you know leave make my trip and come and join me because I have better potential to come you will be talking about your business plan but in a in a format that is relevant to that person so a business plan is not equal to PowerPoint a business plan is a plan for your business some of that story will get told to some people in the form of a PowerPoint but otherwise it's a plan what do you think about when you're talking about a business you're first talking about you know what is it that I'm doing 
what is the problem of the opportunity hey do, don't make notes you can I'll, I'll leave the presentation with you it's available on my blog it's available everywhere but it's it's available just focus on 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 the talk on and make it interactive if you have a question at any point of time just shoot ask uh you have to start with a with a concept right what is it that i am doing and usually i have seen people falling in love with the solution are yaar ye karne ja raha hu i am starting a restaurant which is you know which will have healthy fast food now it's good i mean it's a good idea but my submission to you is that unless you are really deeply in love with that particular idea at that point of time rather than falling in love with an with a solution fall in love with the problem if you fall in love with a problem and define that this is the problem that i want to solve you will find many solutions to solve that problem some of the solutions would work and some of them will not but your chances of overall succeeding in your journey of, of going to that is not dependent on the on the success or failure of that one solution so in the example that i gave you about saying that i want to start a healthy food uh, restaurant that junk food that is that is healthy instead of say if you were to own the problem saying that i want to make healthy food or junk food healthy that's the problem that i want to solve think about the number of opportunities that it can arise it can of course allow you to start a restaurant it can allow you to say hey, i'll go and manage canteens in foods and in schools and colleges you can do corporate canteens you can do packed lunches you can create branded products that are uh, that are packaged and sold uh, you could do home delivery of stuff you can have a blog that talks about or you can have a thing that talks about that you can have ingredients that are done you can have a whole bunch of things so you could probably do 20 different things that allow you to go on after the same goal of doing this and it doesn't therefore matter whether one particular area of that you have chosen succeeds or fails so you think about the concept no matter how good the concept is no individual is going to be able to execute it on his or her own you will need a team it is usually a good idea to have two or three people starting off three people is an ideal number more than that sometimes becomes a crowd less than that sometimes becomes you know the ideal combination is somebody who has got domain expertise somebody who's got technology expertise and somebody who's got sales and marketing expertise that's the most ideal combination but it's usually difficult to find all three together but you should have at least two complementary skills two marketing people coming in together is is good but you know what do you do about the domain what do you do about processes operations finance and all these other kind of so what you do is when you are starting off on your own ideally when you have one or two people together try and find a third co-founder who will who will go, who will, go, uh, who will help you complete the team that as as you would require now why is it important to be able to to have a complementarity of skills within that entire thing because the f- that is the basis on which you will be able to build a business if you don't have a strong team no matter how good that idea is you will not be able to execute it on the ground so therefore don't be don't be uh, not scared is the wrong word don't be you know hesitant in sharing equity at the early stages of a company if somebody you think will be able to uh, help you with the business share equity with that person go ahead and distribute that 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 equity you have to think in terms of what is the size of the market opportunity and i'll i'm going to talk about some of these things things later but the size of the market opportunity is not a gartner report or a or a report that comes in mckinsey report that says that there is 20 billion dollar opportunity here. that's not what a market opportunity is market opportunities have to be built ground up how many people exist and how many people in in my target audience where am i able to go how much will they buy and so you have to build the market opportunity ground up more importantly if you are an entrepreneur and if you are thinking about an innovative concept it by definition means that you are creating a category right how is that mckinsey guy able to to think about that market when you when that concept itself didn't exist so when you are creating something new you are most likely to redefine how the market has been has been created by somebody else so go ahead and make your own assumptions uh, around that entire thing but be practical about those assumptions 
then you have to take in terms of the value proposition positioning this is about how the brand will be positioned in that market and how you will go out and reach out to customers the next point is about business model and business case i'm running a little bit but i'll cover up uh, these points later business model simply is about who will pay how much at what time and to whom that is the business model at the end of the day what is the purpose of business selling something and that money coming into you making a product no matter how beautiful it is is no use unless somebody is able to you you are able to create value for that entire thing and the business case is only about saying that am i making money on per unit level and as a business am i likely to make money at some point of time and these two can be mutually exclusive there is a lot of talk today about e-commerce companies becoming you know uh, are not profitable in this and that but investors are not foolish to to just put money even though they are not making money the concept is that you few make money at a unit level even if it's as as your as your business grows your business case will be stronger so you have to make sure that you have a stronger business case as well competitive landscape in terms of who else is likely to be uh, challenging your business what will be the what will be the you know what are the different companies that will be coming out after you and stuff and the rest about operating risk factors funding needs etc i'm just rushing through this because i will cover some of these points as we go along you know uh, we spoke about this briefly but you have to understand when you're talking about pitching to an investor you have to understand how that person works or how that person's business work while they buy equity into your company nobody makes money by buying equity how do you make money how do you make money by selling that shares right so you have to, when you're look taking money from a bank that bank doesn't care how you return that money whether you return that money from your uncle or your father or your you know you return it from the business but a vc or an angel investor when he's in investing in the company he's interested in making money from the business he owns say 10 15 20 25 whatever that percent equity in their company and the only way they can make money is if somebody else is is buying that company so you have to be very clear as to what their goal and road map for your business is going to be and where that where that investor will be able to make money now typically what happens is that there are different kinds of uh, investors who invest in different stages of a company you and we'll be uh, uh, and one set of investors sells to the other we'll cover that in a bit 10x return is that because they are greedy is that because they are looking for extraordinary returns onto this or is there a different reason for that how many people think that 10x minimum as a return on a, on investment 10 times the return so which means somebody puts 50 lakhs in your company they want 5 crores back this is an excessive expectation how many people think this is excessive and this is about greedy investors i'm glad nobody thinks that way but the reason why this this happens is because not because see there is there is never ever a long sustained opportunity for making exaggerated profits the market always balances itself so how does this work now assume an investor on the 1st of jan 2016 has put 1 1 crore rupees each in 10 companies how many companies do you think will even survive for the next 2 years will be alive how many of the companies will be alive for the next 2 3 years 2 3 3 but 5 or 6 companies will die in the next 1 or 2 years right now assume that this person instead of putting 1 1 crore in 10 startups had put money in real estate stock market commodities market and whatever other things that people put money in in 5 years time this 10 crore would have become how much about 20 25 crores with the kind of 20 25 percent return that that you are giving but this person has chosen to put it in stock in 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 startups 1 1 crore in 10 companies five company to doob gayi now it is left to these five companies to to do, do so one or two or three companies give three times the return 50 lakh dala tha 1.5 crore nikal gaya great great outcome right but still how much has this person got 4 and a half crores how much had he put he had put 10 crores if he had invested in stock market and other things he would have got 25 crores so therefore it is up to those one or two in companies in his portfolio who are reasonably successful to 
pay for the failures of others and make up for that thing. So that's the reason why they look for 10 times return because this is a high risk game. You assume or you hope that all the companies that you are investing in will become very successful but that never happens. Never ever in the world, anywhere in the world does it happen that you, you you know 10 startups that have started it doesn't work and therefore in the startup world the, the word risk capital and failure is not a bad one. It's just the way that's the that's the nature of the game that's the way you play it you you take certain assumptions you hope that these concepts will work some work some don't and therefore if you are successful as a company you are paying for the failures of others much like if you fail somebody else is paying for your failures as well but that's okay you just dust your hands you know get yourself back in action and go ahead and go ahead and you know start another company or you go up and take up a job for a while and, and come back again in the startup world, failure is not looked down upon. Why is it not looked down upon? Because these are experiments that you do. Some experiments work, some some uh, don't. This is this is a continuum that happens. What I was talking about. There is a set of investors that comes in at the early stages. Those early stage investors then sell their stake to the next one. Then the next one goes to the next. Think of it like a play school, school and an engineering college or a college or a, and a higher education institute. What is the role of a play school? The play, role of a play school is to prepare the child enough so that a school is welcoming that person and say, okay, this is a good kid I would I would like to have what is the role of the school is to expand the mind of the child and get them aware of a lot more concepts and help them understand how the world around that works so that higher education institute think oh this is a good candidate I should pick that person up and what is the what is the role of a higher education institute the one like like you're here at is to prepare you so that the industry looks at it and say hey this is a good candidate let me put money behind them in terms of an investment or let me hire that person so at every stage the product and the company that you have is being handed over to the to the next level much like that it happens in the startup world as well angel investors will invest because they believe they have an opportunity that somebody else will buy their equity at the next stage and and so on and so forth huh? uh, at different stages of a business the i'm sorry about the font uh, mac and uh, uh, the same but otherwise it's at different stages of the business the the risk profile of a, of a company changes. At the beginning stages of a journey, what you're thinking of is, is concept me kitna risk hai? Concept chalega ki nahi chalega, ye idea chalega nahi chalega, whether this product will work, whether customers will buy, whether ye log kar payenge ki nahi payenge. All of these risks are involved. Then you go to the next stage where you're talking about early growth stage and stuff. It's all very, you know, different kinds of risks that you will have. It's just saying that concept approve ho gaya. Now I'm thinking in whether this will this will scale up nicely whether the processes will work it worked at a small scale whether it will go on to that next level and therefore what happens is that at different stages of the business you require different kinds of capital at the beginning stages you want to do a little bit of experiment at lower cost you will do five experiments some of them will work some of them will not work right so therefore at the early stages you Depending on the kind of business, anywhere between 25 lakhs to 5 crores is the kind of money that you, you typically get for doing experiments in your business. Our view is that a lot of people, lot of businesses can, uh, and my colleague Sharad is here from, from Applyfy as well. Uh, our view is that 25 lakhs to a crore is a lot of money for at least 80 percent is percent of startups to, to get started off. And that's what we try to uh, provide as well. Hmm? And Typically, other investors then start providing slightly slightly higher amounts of capital. When you are thinking of a business, the first stage, you have to think in terms of phases. The first phase is about discovering what works and what doesn't. What are the assumptions that you are doing that... that uh, and I'm not talking only about the product, I'm talking about everything else. If I go and show my, my concept to 100 people, 40 of them want to go to my set. That is an assumption. Now whether 40 go or 60 go, you're discovering. If 40 people go onto my side, 10 of them actually sift through all my products. And if 10 of them sift through all my products, 3 of them buy. Now therefore, it's a 3% uh, conversion that you have assumed but because there is a different set of you know things what you are doing in the early phases is, is testing whether when I go and show to 100 people do 
does everybody first understand the message and do 40 people go what instead of 40 people 20 people land up to your side your conversion rate is going to be about 1.5 rather than 3 percent and therefore your business projections are going to be half of what you are going to be so in the first phase of your business you are testing out various assumptions that you have and at the next stage you are doing what is called scaling up everything that you've learned is that making sense do you have any questions so far no okay <coughs> every business plan is a set of assumptions there is never any ever anything that can be proven out why because you are just every even you know Sunil Mittal's business plan, Narayan Murthy's business plan, Ratan Tata's business plan, or whoever is running Tata at this point of time, everybody's business plan is a set of assumptions. If everybody could write great business plans that work in the market, there would be no stock market, right? Because then you would know exactly how much money they are going to make. Just that as the company progresses, the predictability of that business plan starts getting in much sharper and therefore the variance from what your assumptions is lower. In the early stages of the business, because you are making wild assumptions at this point of time, you could go wrong in, in different, but that's okay. What you need therefore is not just broad reports saying that oh, I think I can be a 10 crore company in two years time. The logic of why you will be a 10 crore company is more important. Now, whether you become 7 crores or whether you become 15 crores, whether you become 4 crores is not important. Is there a logic underlying that entire thinking that you will you will get on and what, what investors look for? Okay. What investors look for is, is the market large? Businesses that address small markets, and when I talk about large, they are looking for markets that are 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 crores. If it is a 100 crore market, it's a good market, nothing wrong with that market, but it's not a VC fundable market. Why? Because a VC at the early stages makes money by selling to the next level. If somebody, if you've reached almost 40 crores in revenue of a 100 crore market, is there any headroom left for a next set of investors to buy into your company? No, no. So unless you are addressing a 10, 20, 30,000 crore market, don't even look at VC investment. How many people here were, by the way, looking for VC investments? How many people were thinking, saying that at some stage when I look at, at, at looking at in investments, I will look at uh, just one person? You know, it's surprising for an institute of this caliber because the opportunities for entrepreneurs to start thinking or, or, or individuals to start about thinking about startups is so phenomenal in a place like Pune. I would have expected a lot more people to think about it. You might want to, you know, reassess what your, if of all the people who are starting to think about businesses, how you may want to, you know, fund your, fund your businesses. That opportunity is available. Uh, why is it important that you become a dominant player in that market? Let's take Ola for example, let's take housing for example, let's take uh, Nokri or any of these th things for example. Certain businesses, and there is a chance only for maybe one or two players to exist in that market. You can't have 20 players, 30 players. So unless you are the number one or number two, at best the number three player, you don't even have a chance of survival. Restaurant businesses, fashion businesses, clothes, garments, shoes, watches, etc. You can have 100 brands existing in that market, right? But in certain categories, and especially if you happen to be in a category of that, you can't, you can't say that, you know, I think the market is about $10 billion or maybe 50,000 crores ka market. Hai. But how much do I want to be? I want to be a 200 crore company. You can't afford to be a 200 crore company in that market because you won't survive. And Ola won't have, the reason why Ola has to raise so much money and become successful and go to that level is because there is no chance of them even surviving if they had only 1,000 caps. They have to have 50,000 caps. They have to therefore raise 2,000 crores and to be able to fund this and that and stuff and they have to uh, and the risk that investors are taking is that among all the people who are attempting to do these cap businesses this is a team that i think i can bet on to be able to scale that business but they have demonstrated they can scale that up right so think about the kind of category that you are going to be doing a business in and whether there is an opportunity to even be a small player in most categories there may not be an opportunity to be a small player especially as markets are moving online and people are getting aggregated around that 
the old traditional thing of saying that i will have you know i uh, i can coexist with hundreds of brands in that market that entire notion is getting challenged and in many categories you will have to be a fairly large player even to be able to survive in that category is the business case strong and the investors will get an exit business case has to be strong you can't be losing money in that business on a unit level somebody had asked this question about you know whether make my trip is it a lucrative business it has to be a lucrative business because why would anybody be in business you know on the outside when you hear these reports and you know make my trip quarterly loss and this and that it doesn't mean that the business is not strong it just means that certain businesses require a longer gestation time if you set up a factory to manufacture shoes is that factory and your that the number of shoes that you are going to make is that prop, is that going to be recovered in one year no it may take a number of years for that investment to recover right same with e-commerce and online businesses as well there is a certain amount of investment that goes in on technology and customer acquisition all of that needs to be required and most importantly if the answer to 1 2 3 is right then the only decision that the investors will take is is this the team that i want to bet on why because the business plans will never work out the way they were expected to they will never go out they will work they will they will invest on a a quality team with a b quality plan then a b quality team with an a quality plan because plans will have to be readjusted a good team will make that adjustment a a, a weak team will not be able to execute on the ground it is all about executing that business on the on the ground that is that is important for investors okay so they look for strong competitive why is passion important passion is important because every business will go down go through its ups and downs there will be several periods in which you will be going through a period of such lows in your business every business and in professional life as well it doesn't mean that you know business is going to be ups and downs and professional life is going to be this way there will be ups and downs in everything else in life as well so with business if you are an opportunistic business people saying ha yaar iske andar sab log paisa laga rahe hai maybe ye karta hu pata nahi iske andar kya hoga but let me try within that entire thing you are most likely to give up at the first signs of trouble ki chhodo yaar iske andar bahut mehnat hai it's not really working out the way it's not a smooth ride so therefore my suggestion to you is think in terms of what is that one area that you are most passionate about what is it that that motivates you the best because you will then be motivated to stick through the hard times fight it out and make sure that works in getting some again therefore when investors are making it's risk capital right if you fail i don't get anything we don't get anything your money is is wiped out there is no collateral there is nothing i've just got equity in the company but if the company shuts down what do i do with 20% you know the shares that i have worth 20% it doesn't mean anything so what we look for is people who are passionate about what they are trying to do because we want their want to see in their eyes their ability and the willingness to fight it out when 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 the times are uh, are wrong practical milestones i want to be a 2000 crore company fine but what is what is it that you are plan planning to do for the next 3 months the next 6 months all of that is very important because no matter whether you eventually want to be a 20 crore company or you want to be a 20000 crore company the first 6 12 18 months of a business are likely to be similar your learnings this that etc are going to be similar so be very practical about what you will do in the immediate future but we have you have to especially if you look for investors you need to have extremely large aspirations <coughs> focus is important because ye bhi kar sakta wo bhi kar sakta ye char aur businesses bhi hai all of this all of this is fine all of these could be interesting opportunities but history has proven that 999 out of 1000 people who attempt to do more than one thing usually fail you may be that exception and you may be the you know god's gift to mankind you will be able to you know execute it but who wants to take that risk because evidence past evidence usually proves that unless you focus and get something going it's How many people think that? Uh, uh, do you know what is the parent parent company of Nokri. dot com? <coughs> it's called it's a company called InfoEdge. InfoEdge also owns ninety nine acres. They also own now Zomato. They also own uh, uh, which is that Shadi wala thing? Not Shadi. dot com. Sorry. Not Bharat Matrimony. There is a Jeevan Sathi. So Nokri, Jeevan Sathi, ninety uh, nine uh, acres, Zomato. four different businesses that right? i was just talking about being focused and stuff like that do you think they are in four different businesses or they are in one business where the where the where the products are different 
what do you think is the business of what is what what is the problem that that or opportunity that Sanjeev Bhikshandani of Nokri defined as this is the problem that we'll go after. Providing solutions to sub karte Vijay Vanla bhi bolta mein solution de raha for your the problem that Nokri or or Sanjeev Bhikshandani of of uh, Info Edge he went after is I want to kill print classifieds. Anything that has in the newspaper a classified where there is somebody looking for something and somebody offering something that somebody is looking for, he says, I want to kill that. So if you see, 99 acres is about property listing some sellers and buyers. If you talk about jobs, it was printed classifieds, job seekers, job givers. If you look at uh, uh, Jeevan Sathi, it's again the same thing. People seeking brides and grooms and all of these were printed classifieds, right? The competencies required to run that business was exactly the same, which is about handling large databases, technology, marketing and all of that kind of thing. It could be leveraged across different different products within that within that entire thing. So it's not as if that they are doing five different things ki aap to bol rahe, focus karo, fir rahe, aap bolte, you know, they are doing multiple business. No, it's not. It's within the same businesses, they are just making or within the same competencies that are required, they are just doing multiple products. But even they started with just one knockery.com before they've expanded it to other things even amazon and flipkart started with just books and the music etc so to get their act together in terms of processes technology people and then they rapidly started expanding various things so typically most earlier businesses used to go like this in a curve or growth like this in, in, in a curve, right? Gradually. Now the curve for most businesses is different, which is 12, 18 months of your business, you go and you test something out and then suddenly you have this growth curve. It's called the hockey stick curve, which is very different than the way businesses used to be done earlier. So if you look at role models, you have to look in the role models in today's context where you will be able to look at hockey stick growth curves within that. <coughs> Implementation plan is very important. Gartner, Wittner, because these are all assumptions that somebody has done on the base. It's important at some stage. When you are a you know 500 crore company, you want to know whether there is this market is likely to be a 50,000 crore market or a 10,000 crore market. But when you are a startup, it doesn't matter. If instead of 20 billion dollars of the market had been 8 billion dollars, would you have given up that opportunity? No, it doesn't matter. What you have to do is build it ground up your assumptions ground up from where you are building in. Okay. And clearly when you are seeking funding you need to be able to understand how much money you are raising and what you will achieve with, with, with that. Yeah. So um, why th this is important because at the end of the day they are making a big bet on you as an individual. Business plans to change hote rahenge. but unless they can trust you and they can think that this is the team that I want to bet on, nobody wants to invest under that. Plans will never work out. You look at case studies after case study after case study of successful enterprises, you will see that what they had presented to investors and what their eventual businesses turned out to be are completely different because that's just the way the market operates. You keep on making adjustments till you figure out a model that works. What investors are so therefore, why do investors look for a business plan if everything is going to change in any case? Why? Uh, as I keep on saying, a business plan is a useless product. It's a priceless process. The process of detailing out how you want to think about it actually it gives you early warning signs in terms of what is not going right. So therefore, you will be make, able to make the right adjustments at the right time. Okay. So. This is what the, the summary is about. The, if there is one thing that I would want you to remember of what I talked about is that a product and a business around that product are two very different things. Start off with a strong product, it's useful, but a strong product by itself is not a sufficient condition for success of your business. A business has many moving parts. Of business to be successful, you need 20 things to get in together. For it to fail, one of those components has to fail and your entire business can fail. So you have to be able to understand all the components that will make up a strong business. Whether you start your own business or no is not important. If you keep this thing in mind saying that I am doing something which is a business connected to that entire thing, you will be a lot more inquisitive even if you're in your professional careers, you will be a lot more successful. Trust me, 
HR people, your bosses, everybody require uh, the, uh, actually respects and, and is more interested in somebody who is a lot more inquisitive who and goes beyond what you are current day. It's just human nature. So if you are entrepreneurial and thinking, I am sure you will be, I am not sure, I am guaranteeing you that you will be a lot more successful in your professional career as well. Is that fine? <coughs> Promise? And that's me. That's uh, there's, a, there's a blog that I run. On the blog, I, I, I share information about all the learnings that I've got from various different aspects about you know, doing business and, and stuff like that. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, good to see so many hands go up at the beginning in terms of how many people want to be entrepreneurs, etc.